Here's my high vacuum setup, and I want to go over the procedure I do to take this chamber from atmospheric pressure down to about 1 times 10 to the minus 6th torr using first the mechanical pump and then the turbo pump after that. So if you haven't seen my high vacuum basics video, I'd recommend uh, watching that now. I'll give you a quick overview of the chamber. Um, down here, there's the main mechanical pump. It's an Edwards number 12 rotary vane pump. And up here, there's a turbo molecular pump. It's a Varian navigator. On this side, uh, there's a valve to isolate the mechanical pump from the chamber. There's a uh, capacitive pressure manometer, um, the pressure transducer, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have a couple of ionization gauges. I was having some weird readings from the first one, so I have, I have two of them on here right now. This is the main high vacuum gauge. Then around the other end, um, on this side, I have a thermocouple gauge right here. You can get a better view of the turbo pump. Down here I have a couple of gases. Um, hooked up to the mass flow controllers. This is some microwave stuff I'm playing with, trying to do microwave interferometry of the plasma by measuring the phase shift. Um, that's really it. Uh, the inside right now is set up for sputtering. And then the, this is like the command center area. Um, this is the back of it all. Down here there's a control box with a computer and some other electronics I built. There's a step up transformer to make the 240 volts for the turbo molecular pump. This is a 1000 amp power supply for the uh, thermal evaporation, power supply for the RF generator, and a couple other things. And then around the front, um, there's this is the readout from the pressure transducer, the Baritron. 13 volts is um, atmosphere or off range of the transducer and that'll come down to zero volts um, as it approaches like uh, about five millitor which is the limit of that that gauge on top of it, there's a deposition rate controller and these two right here are both deposition rate controllers this is the thermocouple gauge readout on here and we're at atmosphere as it indicates this is the RF transmitter for plasma um, this is the matching network this is the ionization gauge controller and readout and then there's a couple of high voltage power supplies here for plasma experiments so now I have all the gauges on and um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mechanical pump on and that's gonna start the pump down that's gonna take about 10 minutes and it'll pump down to about 50 millitor then I'll pump down a little bit more and we'll start the turbo so hit that guy and then I'm gonna open up the isolation valve so it can actually start pumping from the chamber. We're at uh, about 44 millitor, so I'm going to turn the turbo pump on in a minute here, and uh, then that's going to start dropping a lot faster. You'll notice the pump got a lot quieter, um, it does this as it goes. So now, to turn the turbo pump on, I'm going to close the isolation valve to the chamber, and then I'm going to open up that ball valve with the blue handle there, and you can see the roughing line is pretty simple. Then that's going to switch to the mechanical pump. Instead of pumping the chamber, it's going to be backing the turbo pump. And then I'm going to flip on the step up transformer down here. We're just going to send 240 volts to the turbo pump. So we'll close this guy. Open the blue handle. And then uh, flip on the step up transformer. The turbo pump is going to start to uh, spin up here, and uh, then we'll see the, the uh, thermocouple gauge, and on the bottom right there, the um, compressor transducer are going to start dropping really, really rapidly here. Once they bottom out, basically, then I can switch on the ionization gauge controller, and uh, then we'll be pumping into high vacuum. So you can see already. So that's starting to drop and it's going to go a lot quicker here in a minute. The blades in the turbo pump are just starting to spin up. The uh, thermocouple gauge is a little bit out of spec with the pressure transducer, but I trust the readings we're getting from here. Alright, now the blades are probably about halfway, uh, no, less than halfway spun up. It's dropping a lot, 26 millitor. 
an imposing 20 millitor, 18 millitor. So you can get a graph of this. You'll see that it's like almost like it's approaching a, a limit here. We've been pumping for 13 minutes, so you'll see that was the action in the mechanical pump, and then this is the, the turbo is doing the last little bit here. So. And this gauge is going to bottom out soon. So we're at 4.4 millitor. All right, this gauge is basically bottomed out because the pressure is going back up here. That's just going to move around a little. Now, at this point, that reading is uh, basically meaningless. So I'm going to switch on um, this controller, the, ion the uh, ionization gauge controller. And we'll see, we're going to be around minus 5 area right now, probably. So 5.6, 4, yeah, see, we're dropping. That was uh, an artifact of the filament heating up, most likely. And it's dropping. At this point, the thermocouple gauge above it is pinned all the way bottomed out. So it's going to slowly pump down, and it's going to go to the minus 6 range and stay there for a little bit. Once it drops to 10 to the minus 6, I can do a degas on the gauge for about 10 or 15 minutes. Oftentimes the pressure readings you get on these ion gauges will be a little bit higher than, um, than the actual readings, because there will be a pressure gradient that develops due to the outgassing of the filament and stuff inside of the ion gauge itself. So you can perform a degas to uh, get the actual pressure. So we've been pumping for uh, down here on this gauge. It says 15 minutes so far, and uh, it's pretty impressive for a chamber of this size that it's able to pump down that quickly. And of course, it's slowing down now. We're at 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, and I come back in a few minutes. The uh, ion gauge is on. That's what it looks like. And the filament's on. It looks pretty cool. And it gets quite hot. You can feel it from from uh, over here. In a few minutes I'm going to be running some plasma experiments at a bit higher pressure. Uh, I've got this thing with an inductively coupled plasma and uh, multi-cusp uh, magnetic fields here. And I'm going to be playing with a few different things as well as extraction on the ICP. Alright, it's been pumping for 22 minutes in total now. Um, it dropped down a little bit, 1.1 E-5. And that's going to continue to go down um, and we're going to hit you know, the mid minus sixes and maybe down to the one times to the minus six. We've only been pumping for 22 minutes since we since we're at atmosphere. So normally these things can pump for days or even weeks to get to their actual base base pressure. The turbo pump I'm using is rated down to one times ten to the minus tenth, but um, my chamber's got a ton of uh, ISO and, and O-ring seals and things. It's not all copper, metal to metal to metal seals. So um, I, I can't expect much more than one times ten to the minus six. That's all for this video. In a few minutes here, I'm going to turn off the turbo, um, turn on the mass flow controller, I'm going to flow some argon back into the chamber. I have some plasma experiments I'm, I'm going to do. Um, and uh, I'm going to do them around 100 millitor or so. I can actually use the mass flow controllers to introduce argon into the chamber very slowly, and that helps break the pump, or, or slow it down. Um, I, right now, there's, there's very little friction for the blades, the magnetic bearings, and there's, there's no gas in there for them to collide with. So the pump can spin for hours after I, I shut the power off to it without dropping, you know, even 10 RPM. So I'm going to flow some argon back into there very slowly, um, and just to slow down the blades a little bit, and then bring it up to about 50 to 100 millitor, somewhere in that range. Hold it there, um, I'll leave the mechanical pump on, and uh, do some experiments. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you didn't check out the first high vacuum basics video, um, you should go ahead and do that now.